Well, glory to God in the highest. This is a blessing, amen, to be here today. And um, I'm grateful for the fact that uh, those who are listening, uh, we believe that God has a word for you that will help build your faith and your relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're just so excited about who God is and what he's doing. Uh, despite our understanding that uh, the Bible says to just walk by faith and not by sight. And uh, we just honor the Lord for you being a part of this broadcast today on Facebook. And we pray that you've been, if you're blessed by it, we pray that you'll take the time to share it with somebody else. Uh, because we know that the Bible tells us that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So once again, uh, my name is uh, Ron Hairston. Uh, the name of our ministry is called Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we're providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. So today, amen, we're going to explore the word of God and see what God is speaking uh, to encourage us out of the scriptures. Because as we said before, the Bible says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we believe that the Bible, amen, is, is God's ultimate word for us today. Uh, to so we can position ourselves uh, in terms of the time that we're living in. Even today, as we said earlier, uh, we walk by faith, which means intellectual knowledge concerning God's word. Uh, so with that alone, uh, we're going to get right into the word of God today. So if you got your Bible, you want to get your Bible or your electronic devices and begin to uh, uh, explore the word of God with me today. And I believe that you'll be blessed and highly favored as we move forward even now in Jesus name. So let's pray. So Father, we thank you and give you honor and glory for this day called Sunday, because truly it's a day that we've never seen before. And your mercy is new every morning and great is your faithfulness, O oh God. So Lord, we thank you for our, our time together and those who are part of this broadcast and those who may be listening later. We pray even now that you bless them and wage on them you know how. We pray even now in Jesus' name that you allow me to be a vessel of righteousness for your name's sake as we invite the ministry of the Holy Spirit to take this vessel of clay, think through my mind, speak through my lips, and cause this word, amen, to be edifying, encouragement, and strength to those who hear it today. This we pray, this we ask, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray. Okay, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of John, the Gospel of John, and today we're going to be talking about, amen, which is, I think is good, born again in the kingdom of of God, born in the kingdom of God, born in the kingdom of God. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, born in the kingdom of God, as we explore the scriptures today. So in the Bible, it talks about here in the Gospel of John, we're going to be reading verses one through uh, five. And I think it's uh, important for us to follow along with that. So I'm going to be reading out the King James Version. And John, amen, amen, it says one, three and one, amen, verses one through five. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. It said, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost except God be with him. Then it goes on and says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this says here in the fourth verse, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto you, to thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this is important as we begin to look at this lesson here today, because we're going to be talking about born again in the kingdom of God. Here we have a man called Nicodemus. Nicodemus, a man, he is a, uh, a religious leader, a man. He's a rabbi, according to what the scripture says here. Jesus said that he was a rabbi, or he said he was a rabbi, praise God. Uh, and it talked about how he came to Jesus by night. Now, the word rabbi means he was a master teacher uh, concerning to the old Torah or the uh, Old Testament scripture. And he came to Jesus because he saw Jesus do miracles. And the Bible says here, Jesus rebukes him in uh, the third verse, and amen, and lets him know basically uh, that he must be born again. So basically, he was drawn to Jesus by miracles, but the conversation is very important because what Jesus is going to point out, why Nicodemus doesn't have a great understanding of who he is, is because Nicodemus is being governed by the Mosaic law. 
So the Mosaic law had to deal with uh, uh, the do's and the don'ts in terms of being accepted by God. So the Mosaic law, amen, had to deal with uh, certain commandments. But the Mosaic law is important for you to understand that the Mosaic law did not bring salvation, but it did bring a God consciousness and also not only that, a sin consciousness upon us because we could not fulfill the law because the law was written only to reveal to mankind how short he was in terms of serving and ex being acceptable to God. So the Bible talks about, amen, in the book of John 1 and 17, it says, it says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So now we have this religious leader here in John chapter number three, and it talks about how he approaches Jesus because he sees miracles and signs and wonders. He said, we know that thou art a teacher, amen, that come from God. And he said, no one can do these miracles except God, what, sent him, amen, or God be with him. Now, what he didn't understand that Jesus was the son of God. And because what God is trying to reveal, amen, even through the scripture here today is letting us see that religion won't save you. Religion cannot bring right standing with God. Uh, but religion, amen, can also, uh, is designed to bring us, amen, to a place of understanding because the Bible says that the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So there was purpose behind the law of the Mosaic law. And, and that time, if you really realize it in the Old Testament, there were certain things that we could not fulfill because man was carnal. And when I say carnal, he was blocked in terms of his spiritual walk and relationship because of the Adam's sin nature. But what happened was that they were acknowledging their sins every year. And there was a priest that either prayed for them and their sins were forgiven. So we have, and the law was designed to bring us into an understanding uh, of our sinful ways. And that also reminded that we needed redemption. But the point given here, Jesus, amen, amen, is here trying to convey to him that he understands why he can't see what Jesus is talking about. And it's important for you and I to understand that the kingdom of God, amen, Jesus, amen, his message is all about the kingdom of God. And he said the kingdom of God, amen, is not, uh, uh, come, the kingdom of God comes not with observation, but he said the kingdom of God should be inside of us because the Pharisees were another religious group, amen, believing, amen, in the Mosaic law. And also the thing here is that religion, amen, is, God, is man's best effort to serve God without Christ. So we need to understand that Jesus, even here, he says, Nicodemus, I understand what the problem is. And he tells him the third verse, and Jesus answered, said, Verily, verily, I send thee, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this is important because Jesus, he preached the kingdom. He represented the kingdom. He showed us, amen, that he was the sacrifice for our sins, and that when we become born again, Amen, because that's what the Bible says here. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, because once he told him you can't enter into the kingdom of God, uh, Nicodemus says, well, you mean I, I have to be born again? So he kind of correlated with the fact that he needed to find his mother and crawl back up into her womb and come back out again. So he show you how foolish man could be when we don't have revelation that God gives us. But Jesus begins to clarify and gives them the correct answer in the fifth verse, which is our key verse. Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again of, the, of water and of the, of the spirit, he said he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So today's message, amen, has to do with being born again in the kingdom of God. So being born again puts us in the kingdom of God. That's the point that we want to bring forth and try to uh, uh, drive uh, some more information concerning that because... Uh, even in the scripture, Jesus is saying that the Mosaic law or just trying to be a good person without receiving Jesus Christ will not bring you salvation. Salvation only comes through one man's name, and that name is Jesus. So then when we receive Jesus, Jesus says simply we're now being born again or being saved. So to be saved or be born again puts us in the kingdom of God. I can't say that enough because some people get saved in a church, but then they don't get kingdom mentality. They get church mentality. And I'm not fighting against church and church structure because church is a place where we assemble ourselves together as believers because the word church means ecclesia, called out once. So when Jesus came and died, amen, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He's not talking about what we think church is in terms of how we define church to be. 
But when the word church in the Greek, it means ecclesia, called out ones. He's talking about building himself in people, and people have to have a place to worship. So we go to a place called a church or church assembly or whatever that may be to gather ourselves together. But the focus point of us going is Jesus. Amen. So here again, what we're talking about is being, being born again in the kingdom. Because Jesus says in the fifth verse, he said, Jesus answered, said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except that man be born again of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. Kingdom of God. So we could say that being born again or being saved equals being in the kingdom of God. Being born again or saved or delivered from your own past ways or accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior puts you in the kingdom of God. Now let's go over to Colossians real quick. And Colossians is in the New Testament also. And the Colossians, amen, and it's going to kind of verify this without me just saying it, but the scriptures will say that in the book of Colossians and verse number one. Chapter number one, I'm sorry, Ver, chapter one and verse number 12. This is Colossians 1 and 12. We're going to go right to the meat of this. And it says, giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us to meet, meet partakers of the inheritance of the saints, who have delivered us from the power of darkness, it says, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, that's important because remember, salvation comes through Jesus. There's no other name given under heaven by where by men must be saved, but by the name of Jesus. So when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of our life, amen, by faith, then we've been placed and put in what we call the kingdom of God. Now, what is the kingdom of God? Some of you might be saying, what is the kingdom of God? Sometimes it's used interchangeably, kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. So when we say the kingdom of God, the kingdom, amen, and this is a good definition that Miles Monroe had given because God gave him a revelation on the kingdom and he's going on to be with the Lord. But I want to read, amen, a, a quote what he put down in terms of what the kingdom is. He said, the kingdom is a governing influence of a king over a territory impacting with power, principles, laws, values, morals, Morals producing a community of citizens reflecting the culture and the lifestyle of the king. That's important because when we're in the Bible, it talks about Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the abundant life is tied to Jesus. How we get the abundant life, which is we receive salvation by Jesus. And how we receive salvation by Jesus is believing that Jesus is the son of God, not a prophet, but he is the son of God. And because he is the son of God, amen, he is what we call the last Adam. Because he's the last Adam, he is the sheep, he is the lamb, amen, that was slain before the foundations of the world so we can receive him into our hearts and now come under his jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God, remember, is a governing influence of a king and the word of the king, amen, in Galatians, uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 4, Ecclesiastes 8 and 4 says, where the word of the king is, there's power. So the power of God's word through the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament, amen, speaks to us as believers to remind us that we're in the kingdom of God and we've been brought out of one kingdom into another kingdom. The truth be told, there's only two kingdoms in the world today, and it's the kingdom of darkness and also it's the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The kingdom of darkness is referring to, to Satan and also his demons in terms of deceiving the world. Amen. Now, notice it says here that we just read in Colossians that he had translated out of, us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Now, the message, amen, Jesus. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I come that you may have, I mean, the thief comes, he says in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and life more abundantly. So the whole part of Jesus' ministry, if you followed in the new teaching, his preaching was all about the kingdom of God coming in the earth. Amen. The word of God coming in the earth so we can be governed by that word that's found in scripture that we can live life a new way. Now, the message of the kingdom is to live on earth in a heavenly way. We want to live in God's heavenly way. And God's heavenly way is revealed through the word of faith in which we receive through scripture. Now, the Bible tells us, amen, as we go a little bit further, we talked about Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Not only the abundant life has to deal with us receiving salvation, 
Salvation is, is what God wants us to receive uh, as believers and learning now how to move in the right mentality so we can receive what is rightfully ours as we walk by faith, which is the intellectual knowledge of God's word and not by sight alone. The Bible tells us, amen, is another scripture you want to look at. It's found in 2 Peter, amen, 1, chapter number 1, verses 1 through 4. So basically what Jesus told Nicodemus, amen, he was trying to let him know that the belief system that you have been built upon is not nothing wrong with it because I needed, God needed to insert that Mosaic law and the reason why he needed to do to show man how sinful he was. But then he put priests in the place of that because he knew once they became sinful, they had to be forgiven of their sins, but they still had that Adam's and nature inside of them and that therefore Christ came to redeem us from that nature so we can be born again and have a new nature glory to God that's some good word amen if you can learn how to receive that by faith in Jesus name according to his word now it says here amen as we go a little bit further I think we want to go to second Peter I think I mentioned that let's go to second Peter chapter number one amen and second Peter chapter number one and just listen to what this says here. It says, Peter says, Simon Peter, this is 2 Peter, chapter 1, and we'll go 1 through 4. That's what we're going to read, 1 through 4. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them who have attained precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. Remember, the law could not bring righteousness, but Jesus brought righteousness. It says, through the righteousness of God and his Savior, Jesus Christ, it says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Third verse, according to his divine power, have given unto us all things pertaining unto life and godliness through the knowledge, it says, of him that have called us into glory and virtue. Then the fourth verse says, Whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, amen, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So that, that divine nature had to come forth through Jesus, because Jesus is the only one that's able to change our nature. The law or the Mosaic law does not change our nature. It brings us to an understanding of how much we need God, but yet we're under condemnation. And not only that, but we need forgiveness. Therefore, we need to confess. We had priests then, but when Jesus came, he is our high priest now, and therefore he can change, not only forgive us of our sins, but he can also change the nature which is inside of us, because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I think it's 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. But then the point given today is that being born again, that means that we're in the kingdom of God. And if we're in the kingdom of God, the challenge for us as believers is to learn how to live by the kingdom or the king's word or the word of faith. That's why the word of faith is important. Amen. Because the word of faith, amen, is all we need in this hour as we walk through life's uncertainties. Amen. We need a word of faith. Amen. A word of promise that God has given us through his word. Now, as born again believers, because when we get born again or been saved, you're in the kingdom of God. That means your priority should be on kingdom living. You want to live like the king says you need to live. <laughs> Glory to God. So what that's simply saying, the kingdom of God is a governing, remember the definition, the kingdom of God is a governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with power. We're the territory that God wants to govern over. When you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's now him in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. But he's in you for purpose. The purpose is you need to be retrained. Amen. You need to re be reeducated and you need your mind renewed so you understand how to live out of the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things he said he would add unto you. Now, when we said things, we're talking about things that we need, uh, food, raiment, clothing, uh, protection, provision, uh, health, healing, amen. Uh, all those things that come along with us, in the benefit of us understanding how to execute our, our faith, which is our faith has to deal with our confidence in God, our confession in God, and our obedience to God, and learning how to walk, amen, as children of life so we can reflect, amen, his, his kingship inside of us so people can see that we reflect in the culture of the king, which is submission to his word and his will, 
And therefore, he can get the glory because it's not us doing it. It's him doing it through us. Remember, the will of God is the word of God. Now, let's go a little bit further. By seeking or thinking how to do something or how to obtain biblical principles into one's lifestyle is the key. That's it right there. Amen. And that's where the word discipleship coming. Remember Jesus, amen. He, he, he had disciples. The disciples, amen, something means a student, a pupil, or trainee. Based, based all, uh, basically, what he's saying is, is that, amen, th this way that he's talking about, the way of the spirit, the way of walking by faith it has to be learned. Amen. It's not imparted in you when you first get saved or born again. You have to get in position. That's why the Bible tells us in Matthew 11 and 28, coming to me that all you that heavy laden and burdened, I will give you rest. Then he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest into your soul. So we pe people now need soul rest. Soul rest has to deal with your mind, your will, your intellect, how you perceive things, how you make decisions. God wants to help you in that process. Now, the thing today, amen, return to Romans uh, 14 and 17 uh, in your Bibles or your electronic device. And we're going to look at something and because we're talking about, remember, being born in the kingdom or being born again puts you in the kingdom. And, and right now, that's important because that's, a lot of times people don't realize that where you draw your strength from has to be with what you put your belief in. And remember, Nicodemus has his belief put in what we call the Mosaic Law. And as we said and repeated that over and over again, amen, that law did not bring salvation because law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the transition had to take place from moving from one dimension to another. And Jesus addresses that. And even today, he's trying to address that today, that people just want to be good, a good person and think because I'm a good person where well, I'm going to go to heaven. No, you're not going to go to heaven just being a good person because salvation, amen, is not about being a good person, but it is about receiving somebody who was good. And that person that was good, amen, and took on our sins, his name is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. Praise God. I hope you're getting something out of this today because God is speaking to us as believers, amen, because we need to realize amen where we are in him and how to position ourselves to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight amen so here it says here i think we can go to romans i think i mentioned that to you romans 14 and 17 and when we get to romans 14 and 17 amen i just want to read that and i'm already there i hope you're there also and romans 4 and 17 it says for the kingdom of god amen is not meat and it's not drink it says, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is important because remember, our righteousness comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. He has He took on our sins and we receive him as our Savior when we get saved or get born again. Amen. Amen. Now we're placed in the kingdom of God. That means we're right with God and God is right with us. And in other words, there's no enmity and there's no no, no war going on between us and God. He doesn't uh, disfavor us anymore because the favor that was on Christ now has been put on us. And because it's been put on us as believers, amen, now we're in position of being born again. And now God, amen, sees us as being citizens of his word, amen, because it was the word that caused us to be born again, amen. So it's nothing that we've done on our own. So it says, for the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness. And that means right standing with God. Peace is the government of God. In other words, you can't have government without peace. Amen. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Glory to God. Not only that, but joy, it says here in the Holy Ghost. Now, the thing here, if I want to pull out of here, uh, this scripture, I want three things I want you to write down if you're writing or keeping notes. Number one, we need to understand one's position. Because when you don't understand your position, remember what you put your position in is where you're going to get your belief system from. So if your position is in worldly things and what the world says or if in self, then you can't fight off the spirit of fear because it's a fear. Spirit is a, I mean, this is the spirit of fear. And the Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, those who are believers, but love and power and a sound mind. Because we view things from a different mindset. And that mindset has to give us, amen, discernment. And our discernment comes to understanding what the word of God says to us as the believers under the covenant promises that are found in Jesus Christ. Now, that's important because, number one, we have to understand one's position. Amen. Number two, we have to obtain, obtain biblical knowledge. 
even when this virus hit, we need to not just draw from what the world is saying. We need to draw from what the word of God is saying through covenant and relationship that God's given us through his word so we can position ourselves not in fear, but in faith. Amen. Because in faith, it means our dependency is not upon ourselves, but it's upon somebody, amen, who has the power to deliver us when we don't know how to deliver ourselves. Now, the other thing is that we need to, now, number one, understand one's position. Number two, obtain biblical knowledge. Number three, allowing biblical knowledge to govern our lives. That's a big one. Allowing, I said here, biblical knowledge to govern one's life. Remember, biblical understanding in, in Jesus Christ will provide the instruction on how to live by another standard. That standard is being, being governed by the Spirit of God. Amen. The Spirit of God or the Word of God. And when we're governed by the Spirit or the Word of God, that's just uh, above, amen, uh, of the curse or the above the uh, natural way of doing things. Glory to God. Now, here's the thing that, that as we move forward, the, uh, the standard or the pattern or example that we need to follow is Jesus. Jesus is an example. <laughs> I mean, when you really understand that what the Bible was designed to do, Jesus said, amen, he came that we may have life, have it more abundantly. Not only that, but he lived the life, when we say follow Jesus as an example, in terms of his submission to God the Father, amen, through the word, amen. And that's important. So living, amen, living, living the lifestyle concerning faith and obedience to God's word, because we're in the kingdom of God, that's where we draw our strength from. So in this hour that we're living in right now, the challenge is, is that where are you drawing your strength from? If you're drawing it from yourself, you're not going to have that much strength because eventually it's going to leak out because something is going to overtake you that you cannot withstand yourself. But if you're founded upon Christ or the rock, of, amen, or the word, amen, and understanding how the word of God is not out of theory, but it's out of practice because you're learning how to relate the word, allow the word, amen, to speak to you, to give you the governing factor that you need to navigate through the difficulties that we face in life because he said he come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So lifestyle means an individual uh, or whole way of living spiritually, naturally, physically, financially, emotionally. I'll call that the benefit package of the, being in the kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God. God has a benefit package for being in the kingdom and has to deal with us understanding, amen, what is our will, I mean, what is his promises to us uh, concerning the word that we can seek ye first and seek means to inquire and require what God speaks to us as believers because what he says is true and he's not going to uh, uh, back down on it. He just wants you to understand how to process it in your heart, in your mind, in your mouth, and also in your walk. So living by faith in God will allow God the Father to empower us to live free. Free from what? Independence. I'm so glad it's not about me taking care of me. <laughs> it's about God taking care of me. Amen. Praise God. And it's a different whole mindset because the world doesn't teach that. The world teaches you it's all about you and your strength. Now, they will inject God from time to time when they get in trouble because they want to get delivered from the whatever it is, the oppression is that's supporting them, but they're still going to go back to their own independence. But we're not talking about being in the kingdom of God. Remember, the kingdom of God talks about being born or saved, puts you in the kingdom of God. Now we got to have the mindset to be renewed or learn what that means, which is means we're being governed, amen, by the influence of a king over a territory. And who is the territory? We're the territory that God wants, amen, to impact, to empower, to give principles, to teach us to have uh, laws and values and moral, pro producing a community of citizens, amen, where we come together as believers, amen, because we're reflecting, amen, the culture and the lifestyle of the king, and his name is Jesus Christ the Lord. My God, that's some good word. I'm hoping you're receiving that today. Listen, being free from independence, free from uh, uh, worry, free from lack, free from uh, passion, uh, agitating passions, being free from being free of failure, amen, praise God, because all the, all the part of Jesus, what he's doing, he's bringing freedom, and the freedom, amen, who don't want to be free? Some of us, if we're in the house, amen, we can't get out. We want to be free. It's not in our nature to be uh, uh, in this place of being secure and, and, and padded down and, and can't go 
but six feet from, apart from one another. Amen. We want to be free because in the nature of God, God designed us to be free, but we're not going to get crazy and, and not understand that there's some things require, amen, discipline in this hour, but we know that this too is going to pass if we stay, keep our faith in God and keep trusting in him because we believe that God, amen, he is put, he placed us in a kingdom and because we're in the kingdom, there are promises that he's given us. Now, you need to understand when we say the word of principle in the Bible, it means first in rank. The principle, first, the word principle in the Bible means first in rank, amen, first in rank, first in rank, first in rank, first in time, amen. Uh, it talks about in uh, John 4 and 24, amen, let's turn there for a minute and let's just look at that because this is when a woman was seeking God, her name, amen, didn't mention her name in the Bible, but she went to draw some water, but the Bible says in John 4 and 4, 4 and 24, John 4 and 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So the spirit of God is the word of God. Jesus is the word made flesh. He is the one that brought salvation. When we receive Jesus, even though we get saved in the church, we get born in the kingdom. And now the challenge is, is that we need to develop what we call kingdom mentality. Because as we get kingdom mentality, we get the principles that God wants us to get out of his word, that we can live an everyday life, but yet live it empowered by the power of God. So he can empower us to live above, amen, the things that usually hit us when we're independent and don't have any, any power other than the power that we have of ourselves. Now, this is important because the life principle is information from the word of God. And it really means when Jesus said, I come to you, have life. And most people, uh, this is a challenge for us because we've been programmed to have service, but not programmed to learn how to have life. Jesus said, I come that you may have life. And that life means Zoe life, Z-O-E, life. Amen. Life, amen, that God intended us from the beginning, amen, that we couldn't receive because of one man's disobedience. We said that last week. But now because we, Jesus is the obedient son and all those who receive Jesus receive salvation. And because we receive salvation, that means we're saved or we're born again. And now we're in the kingdom of God. And now we need to be trained how to pull from the kingdom that we live out of, which is out of the word of God. And that's important for you and I to hear. Now, I like this because as we move further in this uh the, uh, God's intent is for us to live. I don't know about you. I want to live life the way God has designed it. I've got, you can have your own dreams, own ambitions, own goals. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it's not driven by God, you're just really wasting your time. Amen. Because you're not going to get the full benefit of what God has for you. Remember when Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. It's all tied to, like we said before, you have to understand one's position. You, have to, um, you now have to obtain biblical uh, knowledge so you can apply it to your own heart, amen, and to your own mind, and even learn how to speak the way God says we need to speak. I can't talk about what everybody else is talking about because I need to talk about what the king has declared. And when I talk about what the king has declared, it takes it to a whole dis different dimension once I understand and I search out what his rights are. There's one scripture in the Bible that says over in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things are working together and fitting their plan for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And see, that says that God has purpose behind it. everything that we go through. It may not be good, but we know if we have our faith and our confession, our obedience, amen, looking to not to ourselves, but looking to God, amen, in faith, believing that what we're walking in and what we're walking through right now, that God has purpose behind it, and he's going to turn things around for your good. Now, you need to understand that God has not abandoned the church during this time, amen. He is still in the earth, amen, ruling by his word. He's just looking for the citizens, amen, to take his word and to speak forth his word and pray his will in the earth. The will of God is the word of God. Now, let's move a little bit further, and we're almost done here. Uh, Jesus removed the curse to establish a new system called the kingdom of God. There we are again. Remember, going back to Nicodemus. Amen. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. He asked a question. He said, no man can do these miracles except God. God be with him. His mindset, he was focused on seeing demonstration. Demonstration proved to him who Jesus was, but not really understanding that Jesus was not only with God. Jesus was the son of God. 
And that's the part that needs to be broadcast even much more, even today if I don't say anything else. God seems how he's kind of allowed us to, to take an inventory of ourselves because you don't have things to pad you or encourage you, the, amen, to push you up or to pump you up. You have to really ask yourself, amen, why am I really following God? Am I following him because I want to understand what the kingdom is all about? Or if I'm following him just because I want to be a part of a system, amen, that we can just have a good time and go home. Praise God. But we need to understand who we are in Christ, what we received in Christ, how to appropriate the word of God in everyday living how to be an effective witness to those who are lost. So Jesus is all about un us help un helping us understand that when we receive him, you've been born into the kingdom of God. You're in the kingdom of God right now. What is the kingdom? I've told you before. I'll say it again because it needs to be repeated over and over and over again because some people have the mindset that when they get saved, they're tied just to the natural church but not to the spiritual part of his kingdom. And please hear me today because I'm trying to help somebody understand Understand that your strength is going to come from, amen, the spiritual kingdom of God, amen. That's where everything we need, it comes from that rim and that rim alone. So the kingdom, again, is a governing influence of a king. What's that king's name? His name is Jesus. Who's the territory? We're the territory. Come when we receive him, he comes in our heart. Now on that, now he's going to teach us his way so we can walk in his path. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let's go to one more scripture here. I think I want to go to uh, Galatians chapter number three to verify that Jesus has removed the curse and established a new system called the kingdom of God. You can't get around it. I don't care what you say. If you follow John, Matthew, Luke, amen, Mark, amen, it's all going to refer to the same thing. Jesus, amen, is representing a new kingdom, a new, a new way of living in the earth. Even when the disciples asked him, teach us to pray as, as you as also taught, John has taught his disciples. Jesus said, when you pray, pray our father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it's already in heaven. And what he's talking about basically is that the word of God being manifested in the, in the earth what was in heaven has to come in the earth because if it doesn't come in the earth, it can't redeem man from his old ways. And, and, and us being good is not being good. It's us being receiving salvation because salvation, amen, puts into a place that was not about perfection, but it's about a place of maturity. Glory to God. God ain't looking for perfection. Amen. If you're looking for perfection, we will, none of us will be saved. Glory to God. But because of Jesus, he is the one. Amen. That fulfilled everything in the Old Testament. And he even they developed the new dispensation called the New Testament. And then even that is found in the New Testament writings of his scripture and the word and also him reflecting us a new way of dependency, not upon ourselves, but upon God in Jesus name. Glory to God. I hope you're getting something out of this today in the book of Galatians. I ain't, haven't forgotten. I just got to get there. Praise God. So in Galatians chapter number three, it says here in Galatians three, and I want to get there in verse number 11. So Galatians, Galatians three and 11. That's where we're going to go. I know I'm, going to, I'm not going to finish this, but we'll pick this up next week, hopefully. But I just got a little, got, still got some more time here, so I want you to stay with me. Galatians 3 and 11, amen, that's where we want to go. And it says here in Galatians 3 and 11, it says, but, what, but that no man is justified by the law. That's the Mosaic law. Just being a good person is not going to get, grant you salvation. You can't do it on your own. I don't care what you say. You can stop smoking, stop drinking, stop cussing, amen, but never receive Jesus. You still don't have salvation. And because you don't have salvation, you're still not in the kingdom of God. And because you're not in the kingdom of God, you're not governed by the kingdom. You're still governed by yourself, amen. So it's important that this is by the, no man can be justified by the law in the sight of God. It is the evidence that the just shall live by faith. Glory to God. Then it says here, and the law was not of not the law is not faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Then it says here, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. My God, being a curse for us as written, curses everyone that hang up on a tree, that the blessing, my God, woo, glory, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of of the spirit of God or the spirit, it says the, the spirit through faith. Now this is important, the blessing of Abraham, when you look at Abraham, the blessing of Abraham, when God called Abraham, he had to leave 
his country. He had to leave his family. He had to leave everything he knew in terms of his own self-worth and had to now give it all up to follow, amen, the speaking spirit of God. And God spoke to him. And God says three things. He said, because God is the father of Abraham. I mean, God is a, Abraham is the father of faith. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. He is the father of faith because faith means you begin to depend upon somebody other than yourself. So he's dependent upon the voice of God that spoke to him. And he said he would bless him. Amen. And to bless him. So the blessing, amen, now comes to us through receiving, leaving our old life, receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And not only that, but understanding because Jesus is our Savior, he is our Redeemer. And not only he's our Redeemer, he's the one that brought salvation. And therefore, we don't have to look at ourselves anymore and to be in a place of being con condemnation or have guilt. Amen. Because now he is the righteousness of God. And now we stand on his account. And now when we feel guilty, we look to him and he said, you're forgiven, praise God. If we're bound by anything, we look to him. He said, I'll set you free, glory to God. If we need anything in terms of health, amen. He said, if, you, if you're sick, look to me, I'll make you whole, glory to God. So everything we need, it comes through our dependency upon the Lord Jesus Christ and understanding that the word of faith, amen, is important for us to position ourselves in understanding, in obtaining, and also allowing, amen, that word, amen, to be a part of your life so you can understand that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that you are renewing your minds, amen, not only renewing it, but understanding that the renewing of mind has a lot to deal with daily practice and understanding what the Bible says about who we are in Christ, what we received in Christ, how to appropriate the word of God in everyday living. So I'm here to tell you today, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you got to get saved. You got to get born again. Then that, that mosaic law, the do's and the don'ts, it was put in place to show you that you could not fulfill it, neither could in your own strength, but it was to show you your sinful ways and also to show you that you're guilty trying to do it in your own in your own mentality. But when you change, amen, from the Mosaic law and come to grace and truth in Jesus Christ and understand that Jesus, amen, he is the savior of the world and that he wants you to receive him as your Lord and savior of your life. And when you do that, then you're under his kingdom, under his influence. And now he wants to develop his power in you, principles and change your morals so that you can reflect the culture and the lifestyle of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his name is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. I'm hoping and praying you got something out of this word today, because right now, when you know you're in the kingdom, amen, you've been born in the kingdom, there can be a lot going on around, but Jesus had made it a promise, amen, that he was able to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So I believe, as we've said ten time past, things are already changing. People are interceding and praying, and the church is praying, and God is moving. He's just not moving as fast as we want him to move, but he's moving, amen, because he's made a covenant with those who are in the kingdom of God. So be blessed and highly favored. I'm thankful that you uh, listen to the broadcast if it's some way or someone i should say some way if there's someone out there that has not received amen jesus as lord and savior of your life it's not about your own self-effort of being pleasing to god because you will fail that pleasing only comes through jesus the christ the son of the living god so i want to say a prayer with you if you've never said amen the sinner's prayer or asking jesus to be uh, a part of your life and you want to be born again i want to lead you on a word of prayer amen and i want you just to follow along with me amen i'm going to just ask you if you're ready to receive jesus as your lord and your savior if you're ready to get this personal relationship with him and you want him, amen, to come into your heart and you want to stand true in terms of, of, of confessing your salvation, amen, by Jesus Christ, we want to do that today in Jesus' name. So repeat after me, Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I believe that Jesus is the son of God and he died for my sins. I believe also that I have need of a savior Therefore, I confess Jesus as my Lord. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me from myself. I believe that you are my Savior now, and I accept your word being the controlling factor of my life from this day forth. And I receive you now in Jesus' name, and I thank you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior in Jesus' name. Now, if you started, 
That's your starting point. God bless you. Amen. That's what I had to do. That's your starting point. Amen. When I say starting point, there's some other things that need to take place. So please take the time. Uh, look at our Facebook page, our email uh, address, amen, and our, our Facebook page. And there's a place where you can send me a message that I've actually received Jesus based upon this prayer you prayed today. And then what I can do is actually send you some information that you can follow up on that you're going to actually need in Jesus' name. The other thing I want to thank God for those, amen, who have been... Uh, uh, sowing seed uh, or financial uh, blessings into the ministry, amen, because we need that, amen, and we thank you for sowing uh, your tithes and your offering. Many of you have been doing that. Some of you fellowship at other places. We don't want you to send us your tithes and offerings, but we, we, we thank you. If you would just send us an offering, we'll appreciate that because the money is necessary for us in terms of what we need to do in Kingdom Faith International Christian Center because we need a place that we're trying to uh, purchase, and that's going to take money, but we can use your help, amen, in Jesus' name. This is how you can help us, amen. I'm holding up, amen, some information here. Praise God. If you would take this information, amen, it has online giving, in which you can see it, amen, and that's www.kficc.com, and you can click the donate button. Then there's a cash app, amen, which is the dollar sign, Kingdom Faith, uh, uh, N-I-T-L-C-C, amen, that's the cash app. And then the other one is the Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, P.O. Box 30704, and that's Gahanna, Ohio, 43230. Three I'm sorry. So that's the information, amen, that you can use. I'm just kind of shaking. That's kind of moving a little bit, but I, get, I think you can see it there. And I'm hoping that you take the time, amen, if you've been blessed by this ministry and blessed by the word of faith that we gave you today, amen, and the word, because the Bible says that men should not live by bread alone, by, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So it is the word of God. God wants to let you know, amen, that if you're in the kingdom, he got you covered. And only you got you covered, but it's your job to intercede and pray for those who are not covered so God can bring them into the kingdom so they can see, because when you can see, you can understand. When you can understand, you can be in a position of faith and not worry because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Until next time, you be blessed and highly favored. Me and Pastor Teresa, as we've said before, we're doing well. God has his hand upon us, and we're viewing things out of the kingdom of God in terms of relationship with the kingdom coming to promises he's given us out of his word. You be blessed and highly favored. We look forward to talking to you again next week, and hopefully we'll see you soon. If not, amen, we believe that God is our covering in these times. Be blessed and highly favored. Love you guys. All right, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.